since we're all college students, we probably not owning a car would be more likely. And we all know that it hurts to pay for gas. It's not fun to work all week and then go spend all that you just made, if you're being kind of tight for part time, on one tank of gas. Now, unfortunately, I'm not here to make that pain better. Probably actually going to make it just a little bit worse today. I'm here to talk to you about why your car sucks. We're going to tell the story of where your gas money and the gas you put in your car is actually going. Now, a lot of people uh, uh, kind of operate under this false idea that maybe most or all of the gas that they put in their car is actually being used for moving them around places. But you might be surprised to learn how inefficient your car actually is. Now, as a mechanical engineering student, I've had a few opportunities to study this in several classes, kind of the thermodynamic process behind this and a whole bunch of fancy ME terms. Um, and I've had some, some teachers who are really into it. It's kind of become a passion of mine just because it's funny that no one is doing a better, we're not doing a better job than we are now. So over the course of this talk, we will touch on how inefficient your car actually is. We'll kind of establish that. Then we'll look at some possible solutions, some things people are doing to maybe make that efficiency a little bit better. So first of all, if we're going to talk about the efficiency of a car, we need to understand what that means to us um, for this problem. And basically, the government in their, you know, in trying to control and put regulations on what miles to the gallon cars are getting and things like that, set up fueleconomy.gov. And they did this big analysis to figure out how efficient the average car is. So this is for, you know, a small, um, sort of a small SUV, a large sedan, something in that area was what they deemed the average car. And they said, well, we start with the energy in the gas tank. That's chemical energy. And the whole point of a car is to convert that chemical energy into the kinetic motion of you moving, right? That's what we're trying to do. But along the way, we're going to set it on fire. We're going to lose some to heat. So our engine's going to get hot. That's going to heat up the air around the engine. That doesn't help us get anywhere, but it's just a, it's just a side effect. We're going to lose some to friction. Friction kind of opposes all motion. So it doesn't do anything that we want it to. And we're going to lose some in the drivetrain. The gearing and everything just has some natural inefficiencies associated with it. So if you take how much energy you start with, you minus these known places where there's, there's losses, you can figure out how much energy reaches the wheels. So what did they find? They found that the average car efficiency is 8%, which wow. hopefully that's kind of like a kind of a moment. That means that 92% of all the gasoline that's ever gone through your car was completely wasted. It heated up the air, or it was in friction wearing down your tires, that kind of a thing. If you put it in terms of money, if you pay $50 for a tank of gas, $4 goes towards moving <laughs> down the road, which is frustrating, maybe, to say the least. But we can go back to this slide. We can put in the numbers <coughs> at uh, fueleconomy.gov, that website actually had there. And you can see that you start with the gas in the tank, which is 100. Instantly, after you've set it on fire, after you've combusted it, you just lost 70% of all the energy you were ever going to have, which is sad. So now we're down to 30 that we have to deal with. You're going to lose 19 to friction over the course of uh, driving, and you're going to lose 3% to the drivetrain. So you can add that all up with some really fancy math, and it equals 8% is what you're actually getting. So that's, that's the, the numbers behind everything. And it's kind of interesting to think about, but this is, again, for the average car. So it's getting 25 miles to the gallon at 8% efficiency. Theoretically, if we could boost that car with a magic wand or whatever up to 20% efficiency, your small SUV would be getting 73 miles to the gallon. And if you could boost that up to 50% efficiency, still well below an A, you'd be getting 160 miles to the gallon in an SUV, so your Ford Explorer, which is, would be insane. That would be awesome. So hopefully you're thinking, what are people doing to make this situation better? Well, the good news is a lot. Scientists drive cars too, so they want to not pay a lot for gas. So what they are trying to do is fix the engine, because that's kind of our big problem spot. So there's two new big engine designs that are going to hopefully be on the market pretty soon. The first one is called, that's pronounced screw dairy engine. And the idea is we take and we separate our, this is the intake of cold air and the compression phase. So this is the cold half of the engine, and this is the hot half of the engine. This is where the combustion takes place. So if you separate those two, you're not constantly heating and cooling everything and you're going to lose a lot less to heat. So this is claiming to be 50% efficient. One of the big benefits of this type of an engine is that it operates off the same piston type of design that most engines today use. 
So it wouldn't be that difficult to take a car and put one of these in it, hypothetically, if we were if we uh, get this design off the ground. Now, this the two designs that I'm talking about today are both in development at the other MSU, Michigan State University. So we'll see how quickly they can get patents on them and move. The other one, as uh, sci-fi as it sounds, is actually called the Shockwave engine, um, and this is totally redesigned. This is a completely new idea for an internal combustion engine. Basically what you're going to have is a single cylinder, a closed sealed cylinder, and at one end you're going to have this disc right here. And as the fuel-air mixture is added to the inside of the cylinder, that is going to start to spin and increase in RPM to a point where the vibrations caused by those little sweet wigglies create a shock wave. That shock wave will compress the fuel mixture and then it will be ignited. Now, that compression process is a lot more efficient, and you eliminate about a thousand pounds of moving parts in the engine. So, a four-cylinder equivalent of this engine is about the size of a bread box, if that makes sense. So, really light. So, they're hoping this will be 60% efficient. So, as you can see, we've got a lot of really good things going for us that hopefully can bring this back up. Again, if we got to 60% efficiency in this engine, it's 31% In between those other numbers I was telling you, 20 and 50. Um, so yeah, over the course of this speech, we have established that your car does suck, and that's a bummer. But we've also established that there is, in fact, hope for the future. Uh, we may see soon uh, the next design of engine that's going to uh, help us spend a little bit less at the pump. And if you're really infuriated by this, and you want to do something about it right now as a poor college student, Remember that most bicycles are about 99.8% mechanically efficient.